back was today in practice, especially with the day off yesterday? Uh, it was good. I, I tell you, uh, our guys have been engaged. Uh, are connected. They, they've done stuff together since the summertime. Uh, all that stuff I'm not concerned about. Obviously, uh, for me, there's some X's and O's that we can clean up and, and stay engaged with longer than what we're doing. You know, we watched film for at length today, and the guys could see we showed a couple of clips of them not doing it. <laughs> we showed a couple of clips of them, and I told them. Hey, look, these clips that I'm showing now, they can be a Webster's Dictionary defining how we need to defend this action. And so to embrace uh, the little things to where it's monotonous because you're doing it over and over and over and over again uh, is going to be big for us going forward. Like, you talk about that. Is there, like, in games, are you seeing a little bit of focus issue here and there with this, where they're not following through on a second or third action or where they're missing free throws and it seems like they're... It might be just a little bit of a lack of focus. I don't know if I, James, I don't know if I call it a lack of focus. Uh, I, I don't know if we fully embrace the, the details that you have to embrace in order to uh, stay to be and stay at a high level. You know, because we all know, no matter what you do, no matter what walk of life you're in, there are details that are extremely important that if you do them over and over and over again, it can get kind of kind of boring, <laughs> you know? And, uh, and and it's hard sometimes to continue to embrace it as long as you need to in order to come out on top. And maybe you can say lack of focus or whatever, but I would be more uh, apt to say, if you embrace it and you really appreciate it, it can help you lock in for 48 minutes a little bit better than what we're doing right now. It seems like a lot of times the different, some of the big differences in your defense is how you're executing on the guys you have labeled hot or not and the closeouts varying on that. And obviously it's sort of player dependent, but from your experience and how many people you've coached, how difficult is that to stay locked in with everything happening so fast? Well, it, it, it's a lot harder today than what it was t uh, two years ago or 10 years ago or 20 years ago because the offenses were uh, completely different. And I said this in my co press conference the other day, and, and I, yeah, I wish I would have found it to, to talk more in depth about it. But again, there, there are six, or six, seven, eight teams maybe that are on pace to historically break what was already a historic offense last year. You know, we're around the same area as we were offensively this year. And, and, and I say that because we've had a lot more injuries and we've had a lot more stuff that we had to deal with this year than we have in the past, but we're still relatively uh, in the same area offensively, but we're 13th, I think. And, you know, like last year, if we, if we were in season last year, we'd be a top five, probably for sure a top 10 offense, but possibly a top five offense based on our numbers this year, and we don't think we've played well on that end of the floor. So uh, I would say it's, it's, it's more a product of everybody's offenses getting a lot better and being a lot harder to guard because in the Milwaukee game, we didn't do a good enough job getting their hot shooters off the line. They have a lot of them. They, they played a lot of them. Uh, last night, um, like, TJ, it was TJ getting off the line. Even our closeouts to him at times, our angles weren't good. And he's a great player, uh, especially for everything that he brings to the table physically. But you'd rather see, you'd, you'd live with a late contest on a three, so that means you, you close out short trying to catch his right-hand drive than anything else. Uh, but he was crafty enough and quick enough to do what he wanted to do, whether it was us closing out to him after being in the shrink position or him coming off of the ball screen and us guarding him in a one-on-one -on -one situation because it was a small, small, and we were supposed to switch at that time. Coach, how important is, you know, to have a few days off, you know, until Monday, you know, compared to, you know, having that road trip and coming back in and then after play. It had to be a little refreshing, you know yeah, you know, obviously everybody plays at 82 and everybody has a tough schedule. Uh, but the, the last stretch, and that's what makes the, the, the game so tough, you know. You, 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 you hope you 
get to Milwaukee, but you don't on a last second shot. You hope you get Phoenix, but you don't because we weren't great defensively down the stretch, uh, nor were we good offensively down the stretch. But we, we, you know, I, I got to give our guys credit. I, I, I mean, I can't sit up here and say, I'm, I'm pissed because we didn't do this. Uh, if we would have won both the Milwaukee game and the Phoenix game, uh, you know, I, I, I'd have to give them credit for the way that they played, but while also pointing out things that, that we could have got better in, you know, and we did enough to win both those games. We just didn't close it. And then uh, same with Indiana. I just thought that uh, uh, at the beginning of the game, uh, we gave them confidence. And, uh, you know, they're in the NBA just like us and anybody else. And when a team gets confident, or individuals get confident at this level, uh, it's hard to stop. So we, we've done some, some really good things. And, and I mean, I, I sit here and I'm watching the film, I'm watching the game and I see it, and then we kind of go away from it from a little bit and then we get back to it and it's not enough to win the game. And so uh, that's what makes it tough. Having said all that, uh, yeah, you take the rest so you can kind of sit back and take a deep breath and clean up some things. You can get a little rest mentally and physically for your, you know, for, for, for the next stretch, and then you go forward. But again, everybody kind of goes through it. Did uh, you, you employed the, uh, the trap the full court press in the last two or three minutes of that Indiana game? How, how do you feel about that too? Because it was working to a perfection. I mean, you got a couple spots in there, and. Um, you can close the game into about three and stuff. How, how do you feel about that type of defense? That, uh, that way, well, that I, I don't. I, this is just me personally. I don't think you could do that for an entire game, because um, uh, you're going to give up some wide open looks, or you're going to give up possibly some dunks uh, if teams execute first that uh, well, and and you're going to tire your guys out if you try to do it for most of the game. Uh, but again, I, I, I got to give our guys credit and. and you know, there's there's no moral victory here, but we're down double digits, and our guys literally fought until the end of the game, and, and, and they gave us a chance to win by bringing it to a one-possession game. So uh, they did a, a tremendous job of executing it, uh, flying around, trying to cover for one another, going for steals at the right time. Uh, there was one time that they called a foul on Kev that uh, you know, I, I don't know if it was a foul or not, but. You know, that, that was tough because they weren't scoring and it gave them a chance to get two, two points really easy uh, with a lot of time still left. But other than that, uh, I thought our guys did a fantastic job of fighting and trying to give ourselves a chance uh, uh, at the end of the game. Deer's uh, efficiency has dropped a little bit this month. Obviously, he was scoring 30 a night. Um, how's he doing? Is he, is he all dinged up right now? How do you think he's holding up at this point in the season? I think it's it's fine. I mean, this is you know a long season, 41 games. Uh, we're at the 41 game mark. Um, he, he probably is dinged up, but uh, everybody is, you know. And and I know I've played him more minutes than I've wanted to, and I got to be conscious of that. Uh, same with Domas. I probably played him more minutes than I've wanted to as well, and and maybe Malik too in terms of the length or the stretch of the minutes, uh, but. Uh, Fox isn't going through, I don't think anything that uh, other guys are around the league are going through right now at this point in the season. Yeah, Mike, you, go for it. Uh, yeah, Mike um, the last couple of games have been close losses. Yep. And you had a lot of lopsided losses before that. Is there a lot more as a coach to look at and to talk about when you have these tight losses and you can point to specific things where you can clean up as opposed to some of the the bigger losses where you know sometimes you just want to run the table. Yeah, a hundred percent. You know, first of all, James, you know, nobody, no, I don't want to lose. Nobody wants to lose. Okay, but with the loss, with some of the losses that we've had, and we may have them again. I don't know, but uh, you know, you don't like to see that uh, because it can be really disheartening and more importantly, what I think is extremely important is it can impact your belief. Uh, because again, everybody's in the NBA and a lot of times, uh, and so that everybody's a really good player and or a really good team. They have the potential at least. And a lot of times what it boils down to is who has the strongest belief. 
when you have two good teams and when you have a little lull do you hit when you hit a little lull during the course of the game are you that confident do you believe that strongly in yourself and your group that hey that they just made their run now we're going to make our run and and so tight ball games allow that belief to really stay there if you continue getting beat over and over again by 2025 again it's not the end of the world but it's harder to hold on to the belief that you are a good team or that you have a chance to be an elite team and that's what bothers me more than anything else in those types of losses you, you still teach and you still try to work to get better in the blowouts but at the end of the day you worry more about the belief part than anything else and that can have an, a huge impact on uh, where you guys finish at, 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 uh, in the season uh, than if it's a tight ball game and you're teaching and you end up losing in situations like that. Mike, any NFL predictions for tonight? I'm heading down there now, baby. <laughs> I wish it wasn't raining, but it's okay. Uh, let's go Niners. Let's go Niners. Thank you, Thanks, Mike. Appreciate it.